Chris. I was the VFX supervisor and artist for this sequence, and I was super honored to be part of this short film. And today, I'm breaking down how I composited muzzle flashes and hits that actually feel real. Today we're gonna do muzzle flashes the right way. So we're gonna jump right into it in After Effects. I'm gonna bring in my first element here and I'm gonna adjust the pivot point to be right at the beginning of this muzzle flash here so I can rotate it, scale it, and align it with the muzzle of the gun. Now I'm gonna add another element here and just like sound design, you kinda wanna stack different elements together, give it some complexity, some dimension, and as the gun moves, that's gonna help a lot. Another thing that's helping a lot is this lighting that you're seeing here, and this was actually done practically on set. I just asked the DP to introduce a flashing light with the right frequency and kind of like a warm tone. As you're seeing on screen, the alternative here is a lot more annoying and you basically have to kind of paint fake light in and animate accordingly. So that's definitely the long way if you have a light on set, it's just going to make the effect look so much more grounded. So now let's add a new null object and this is gonna be used to track the overall movement of the camera motion. So not the gun, but more of the overall scene. And for this shot in particular, I'm just gonna do it manually. So I'm not gonna do a 3D camera track or anything else. It's just pretty simple since we're only using this for the smoke part of the muzzle flash. And that's because we want the flash part of the muzzle flash to follow the gun, while the smoke that lingers afterwards to follow the movement of the scene. So let's bring a new element and just show you what I mean. But I'll split my assets into two parts. So the first few frames of the flash will be its own layer. So I'm gonna align this in the timeline and align it with the gun in the scene. And then I'm gonna scale this up to fit the shot better. And now usually you wanna set the flash part of it to something like add or screen, depending on your scene. So you can see that if I move forward a few frames, I actually want to separate the smoke. And I can do this by hitting Shift Command D on my keyboard or Shift Control D for PCs. And that splits the layer at the playhead. And this is super convenient because we can adjust other things like the transfer mode and the opacity of this second half of the layer. Now, one thing I want to point out with this top layer here is that I've added this custom lens flare to kind of fade on and off anytime the muzzle flash happens. And that's because this is not just happening in a vacuum. You want to think of how this force, this little tiny explosion at the front of this gun is affecting your scene and also how that light element is interacting with the exposure of your camera and the lenses that you're using. So now let me grab all of the smoke parts and let me parent those to the null object that we created. So now the smoke elements will follow our scene. There's no need to track the rest of it because the flashes only happen for like a frame or two and they've already been positioned where the gun is. So now we have our muzzle flash separate from our smoke which is again, the number one rule that you wanna do with proper muzzle flashes. But as you can see here, we also have some shells coming out. So let's do that next. So first and foremost, you need to know what kind of shells you wanna use. So look up what ammo the gun that you're using actually takes. And basically you just wanna put two keyframes for the position so that it shoots straight out from the gun. And then a nice thing in After Effects, you can kind of grab these nodes here and make it a curve so that it actually shoots out in a more realistic way. Now, the first instinct to adding elements like this is to add motion blur. And I would suggest actually not using the default motion blur because you can barely see it. It's just a little speck flying across and it's really hard to read. So I'm gonna turn off that motion blur and I actually wanna fake my own motion blur. So I'm gonna use a directional blur and I'm gonna adjust the direction to match the direction of where the casing is shooting at and adjust the blur length to kind of give it a little bit of fake motion blur, but not too much to where we're losing the shape of the object. Now, another thing to make it stand out is adding a drop shadow. So in my case, if I unsolo this layer and I bring my scene back in, I can actually select a highlight of the real color that was in our scene that would actually interact with this object. And of course you can match the direction and a few other parameters. And you can also duplicate this effect to add different colors, maybe different light hits that are hitting this object. And then finally, I added a brightness and contrast effect that I can animate so that it actually gets brighter when the muzzle flash is happening. And you basically wanna rinse and repeat this process. You wanna duplicate that layer once you feel good about it and just move it around in your scene, readjusting the position and adjusting the timing so that it happens and the shell casing is ejected when there's a new muzzle flash. 
And there we go. But now with a good muzzle flash as a bonus, I want to throw in all these hits and talk a little bit about what this process looked like because that was also super fun to do. And even adding details like smoke kind of lingering in the atmosphere after the gun has fired, since that's something that would actually happen in real life. So the best trick of creating these type of hits, other than using great assets, and in my case, I'm using production crate, but even better is having practical effects on set. And we had a special effects master on set. Uh, he used this kind of paintball gun that shot these hits. And he also had props like this planter that were rigged to kind of explode and pop. And having footage that looks this good and this fun already is so much nicer than just looking at a clean plate where nothing's going on. So you can track your elements, add more chaos to the scene, even with a simple 3D camera track and just adding a few additional pops on the ground around the feet. Now for this other reaction shot, I added a few other elements of these bushes that kind of like move a little bit, color correcting them with even curves and tint effects are honestly sometimes enough. And you also want to add some blur to match the depth of field of where this element is in your shot. And in this shot in particular, this kind of like firing from the hip shot is actually three different takes. We had the two actors filmed separately and then we had a few additional takes of spark hits and other pyrotechnics that would be probably unsafe near the actor's feet and all of those were kind of mashed together along with some digital assets on top to kind of sweeten the whole thing and there you go once you put all these elements together it creates such a fun sequence and then as a last little bonus for these underwater hits it was literally as simple as just dragging and dropping them in scaling them up and positioning them in a way that made sense from the direction of the shots barely any tracking done i think just some manual repositioning and that was that so yeah, such a fun sequence. I was honestly so honored to be part of this project. And if you do want to watch it, it's actually out right now. You can watch it on Apple TV+. Plus. I really think you're going to enjoy it. It's a pretty funny comedy with a lot of good talent into the project. I'm also going to leave a link to where you can watch it in the description. There's, uh, there's nothing. We'll see about that. I was wondering where the hell you went, Stuart. We should run our lines. Easy money. What do you got there? Turned out to be anything but. Don't you get any ideas. I'm not. So yeah, definitely check it out. And also, if you want assets like that lens flare that I showed to kind of add that light interaction, I actually have a whole pack called Vintage Light Effects. And of course, if you want to check out Production Crate and all the assets that I use, link for that is also in the description. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Coart, and I'll see you next time. Baby, I'm weak, baby, it's time, tell me where we go Whenever you're free, whenever you are, let me hear you go Baby, I'm weak, baby, it's time, let me hear you go Tell me where to go, let me hear you go